Hey guys, my name is Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So today we're back out here in on the pole barn, our brand new pole barn that we just built this year. And we're, we got a project today for the workshop. So here coming up, I got a, quite a few welding projects to do and I really don't want to weld everything on the concrete, on my knees on the ground. So I've decided I need a welding table and uh, I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and just build my own. So that's what I'm doing today. I've already cut out the frame that's gonna go, uh, we're gonna make a basic frame, the table's gonna be on that, and then the legs are gonna come off of that frame. So let's go ahead and uh, get tacking this together and get the frame welded up. So I've went ahead and I've took a wire wheel, and this is two inch square tube. I've went ahead and polished that up with a wire wheel, cleaned it up, that's gonna help it weld a little bit better with my MIG welder. And then I'm just laying it out here on the concrete floor. I'm hoping this is a fairly flat surface. And uh, we'll just go ahead, we'll tack this up and uh, get it uh, tacked together and then we'll lift it up off the floor and we'll weld it out the rest of the way. So I've been trying to get more metal working tools and earlier this year I got this Miller uh, MIG welder, a Miller 211. It's a pretty good MIG welder, a lot better than my old MIG welder I had. And then I got that saw that you saw me cut this all up with. I got that a few months ago and slowly just trying to get some more metal working tools here in the shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and just weld this out the rest of the way and then we'll move on to the legs. Not very pretty. Well, I am obviously not a welder <laughs> by trade, by any means, just a hobbyist. And I'll tell you those ones that are straight up and down on this outside were tricky. So I'm just gonna stand this straight up so I can finish the welds on the end. So I've got the frame of the table all welded together now and we've ground the welds down nice and flush. So we've got a nice surface for the table to sit on now, the tabletop. So I know some of you are probably wondering why didn't I just go out and buy a welding table? Well, I did look, I researched it very hard and welding tables are very expensive. They're expensive to ship. And the ones that I could probably would have been in my price range would have been fairly thin. And I need more than just a welding table. I need a, a heavy duty workbench. I need something that I can work off of. And if I'm sitting here using uh, a hammer on it, like a mini sledge or something like that, I, I need a table that I don't have to worry about tearing up or one that would bend up real easily. So that's what we're doing today is we're actually making a heavy duty workbench and a welding table. So I've got some half inch plate steel out there. It's three foot by four foot, and that is gonna be the top of our welding table. But I think the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead out, back out here. We're gonna cut the legs. I've got some three and a half inch square tube. This is some pretty beefy square tube, and that's gonna be our legs. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that out and see if we can weld those to the table. This is a three and a half inch square tube and it is quarter inch thick. It is some beefy stuff. So this is my metal cutting saw and it just has, I believe it's a 12 inch blade on here. It's got carbide teeth. Now you wouldn't think that this would normally cut steel like this, but the way this works is actually spins at about half the speed. And that's why you don't see any sparks and it allows it to cut okay. Seems to work pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just tack my legs on here. So you can see how I ended up putting the leg on there. It's actually 
inset from the side about a quarter of an inch off of each side here. I think that'll just give me a nice place to be able to run a bead of weld around the leg. And I think it'll just look better. So I've got the saw, I've changed it to 45 degree. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out some triangles. They're just gonna be some little gussets that we're gonna weld in at the top of the legs. So this gusset that we made, I'm gonna put that right in here in the corner where the leg is. So I'll put one of these magnets in here and that'll hold that in place. We'll weld it around the leg, we'll weld it to the frame and that ought to just kind of strengthen everything up a little bit more. Probably doesn't need that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. So it's been somewhat of a rainy day today. Oh, and all this stuff got splattered with mud as I was driving it home. Oh. So we put this on here with a fork truck and kind of slid it off and laid it down. Now with this steel plate, I'm afraid I'll cut these straps. Um, so I ended up using some pieces of cardboard as softeners. And you can see it actually cut right through that cardboard right there. Um, so probably a good idea to at least soften, soften those somehow so that you don't cut a strap and then it breaks while you're driving down the road. Oh, I think I got her now. All right, wipe all the mud off of here. No, it's not a good towel. So the way I built this is actually gonna have a two inch lip all the way around the tabletop. I just need to get a measuring tape, see if I can get it where it needs to be. So it's the next day now and the tabletop is all welded on and then I've taken an angle grinder and uh, with a wire wheel and I've just kind of cleaned everything up because this is probably the last time it'll be upside down. So, uh, so the next thing to do is to try to flip it over and this thing weighs at least 400 pounds right now and I think I'm going to try to use the tractor, probably pick it up with the tractor forks, take it outside and somehow see if we can set it on the ground and start flipping it over and try to use the tractor as much as possible um, because this thing is pretty heavy to handle by yourself. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it turned over. Put a couple boards under here and hopefully I can get my pallet forks back under it. Now we're gonna see if we can lay it over. Well, oh man, that thing's heavy. All right, now hopefully we can use the pallet forks to stand it back up. This thing's pretty heavy. Not too bad when you're just tipping it. So I wanted this metal workbench to be mobile, so I knew I needed some swivel and locking casters. And these are the ones I ended up finding. These are probably a little bit of overkill. This is a six inch caster and it is rated at 600 pounds a piece. So a total of 2,400 pounds that these casters will hold. Now, I probably could have gone with a smaller caster, one that was probably like a four inch or something that was rated closer to 300 pounds, but I just couldn't find it. So these are made, they got holes in them. They're made to bolt to a surface and the bottom of our legs are hollow. 
So what I've decided to do is I'm, I'm gonna beef this up just a little bit. I'm going to add some quarter inch plate to the bottom of each one of these casters. Um, and I'll probably just weld that on through the bolt holes. And then we'll take that and we will weld that on to our legs. And then we're gonna be pretty much done except for painting. It's not perfect by any means. I don't think it's going to work. It's close. Oh. Closer than I thought it would be. If you let go of it. It's staying. Stay there long enough for me to weld it. I've got the table legs finished up. Everything's welded. I've, I've taken paint thinner and kind of wiped everything down. So now I'm going to paint it. Try to get it out here in this gravel. That way I don't get any paint on my concrete. Now I'm only planning on paint, painting the, uh, the legs of the table, not the top. got the uh, welding table slash heavy duty workbench got it all painted up and it's done so uh, this is actually probably just the first stage of this table this is like the basic table right here and I've made it so that you know I can come back here later and I can I can make some additional stuff to it to make it more functional so um, I could drill some holes in the table so that you could clamp uh, use that to clamp uh, material down to the top of the table. I also had these square tubes that are open on the ends. On each end there's two square tubes so that makes makes it where I can slide uh, maybe an additional tabletop on onto the top here. One that maybe could slide in and out so you could hold longer material. Um, and then I could also add some hangers down here to hold clamps and some other things. But for now this is the basic welding table and uh, maybe later this winter I'll come back and uh, add some extensions on here and add some other functionality. But this is gonna work for me for now. I just need to go ahead and get it in the pole barn and find it a home. So I have been trying to expand my metal working capability this year with the new welder and the chop saw that we got for cutting metal. Now we've got a welding table. Um, next thing, one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eventually build a, a welding cart so I can put the welder on top of a cart that can roll around. And uh, I'm always checking auctions and stuff. I'm always looking for some kind of metal working tools and stuff on auctions. So maybe eventually I'll get even some more stuff. But I think this is enough to probably at least get me going, start making the dog kennel panels that we're going to do to make to finish our, our dog cages in here. And, um, of course, working on tractors and all that stuff, this table is going to definitely come in very handy. So I think that's it for today, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, my God. Whoa. I may need the tractor for that. That thing is heavy. I gotta figure out a way to cut this. That thing is heavy.